Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA, episode number 188. I am Brendan. Bellator 287, bon, uh, Mansoor Bonoui versus Adam Piccolotti. I really hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, we're going to cover the main card here. If you're looking for the prelims, uh, I'm going to post that a little bit later. If you're looking for the UFC card, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to post that a little bit later. Uh, before we get started, if you like MMA, you like podcasts about MMA, you like fight breakdown, just what I do here. I appreciate y'all. If you stop by, let's get into the fights, shall we? Uh, like I said, let's cover the main card. Uh, starting with the main event here. So Adam Piccolotti versus Monsieur Bonoui. So uh, Piccolotti is known for his grappling, uh, being an excellent grappler, and uh, he, Adam got the takedown. So he ended up, he ends up losing this uh, via uh, uh, rear naked choke uh, in the second round. And dude, this first round was crazy. So because Adam Piccolotti is so damn good on the ground, you would expect him to take on this guy who's, you know, been bouncing around. And yeah, he's uh, fought before. He's been a champion in another organization, but he's uh, this is, I think, his Bellator debut. And uh, Adam got the takedown immediately and then got swept right into an Omoplata attempt. And then uh, he went right into an Omoplata attempt. So Piccolotti, you know, staying aggressive off his, off his back, doing what he's got to do. But then there was like this, this exchange on the ground, very active grappling, and Mansoor got on top, staying on top and doing a little bit of damage, and Mansoor got the body triangle, landed a ton of ground and pound, and Adam Piccolotti wasn't able to do anything in this first round. Anything. Like, he had nothing in this first round. Just nothing. I actually had it 10-8 for Mansoor, uh, just because he didn't do anything back, Right? Then Adam, uh, in the second round here, he used a guillotine attempt to uh, get get to the ground and get good position. But Mansoor swept and got on top and then got the back. And then he finally locks in the rear naked choke. And you can see the the images here. He he submitted him here in the second round, dude. It's it was it was like a clinic. It was like watching it, dude. Piccolotti's an uh, a uh, BJJ black belt, somebody with a lot of skill, someone who uses it well in MMA and mixes it up and does what he needs to do, but he just got dominated. Wasn't even close. Like, holy shit. Woo. Not even close. I mean, there's not much else to talk about other than, like, how bad that was for Piccolotti. Just getting destroyed like that. It's just, it's not great. It's not great. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the co-main event here. Uh, Fabian Edwards taking on Charlie Ward. Uh, good fight uh, for what it was. Uh, this is, you know, I, clearly uh, this was a setup for Fabian Edwards. I don't know if you noticed the uh, family resemblance here, but he, uh, his brother is the champion in the UFC, Leon. And, you know, I, I'm wondering if Bellator was setting him up with this fight against this old, uh, an older guy, a veteran in Charlie Ward, so that they could run the run the storyline that uh, Fabian Edwards is the champion in the Bellator and Leon's his brother and, like, you know, both of them are champions in different organizations. Would be cool if they fought. Like, I know they're different weight classes, but, oh, hey, you know, like, wouldn't it be cool if this and this? And look at both these guys are... I'm sure that's what Bellator's doing, and uh, it's pretty smart on their part, but you, it's w one of my least favorite things watching some of these fights. Uh, Edwards taking, was taking the same. He ends up getting the decision win here. So Edwards took the center, uh, and Ward was trying low kicks, but he wasn't really landing much. Uh, Edwards picking him apart on the feet, landed a huge head kick and wobbled Ward early on in this first round. Then he got a takedown and sat, sat on like, or then he got taken down and then pretty much sat on his back for the rest of the round. Edwards is off to uh, look really bad. He looks really bad off of his back. He eventually gets up, and then Ward cracked him with a right hand and stunned him a little bit. But that was the end of the round. So the, the damage was in favor of Edwards for sure, but the end sequence of that round really calls into question uh, his abilities moving forward. So if he wants to take on Johnny Eblen, who is the current champion, who is an excellent wrestler, how do you expect to win? I understand that, you know, if he fights like his brother and this and that, and he can always get a head kick knockout or whatever. Oh, man. man I am exhausted. Holy moly. Um. So I get all that, and I understand that he's great and all, but 
it just it, it calls into question his abilities moving forward in, up in this upper division. It was a fun fight to watch in the second round. Edwards actually got the takedown, and honestly, I thought that might be the best move for him. Being on top, it seemed like he could stay in control, and he didn't have to worry about getting taken down, and he didn't have to take any damage on the feet. Uh, he ended up going for the rear neck and choke, but uh, uh, he fell off his back. He fell off of Ward's back. Ward just looked really tired. Apparently, a low, there was a low blow from uh, Ward. Edwards says something to him. Ward. Uh, says fuck you back to him, which was kind of uncool. I don't know. That whole sequence was really weird. Ward swinging big, and he manages to land a few good hooks. Then he got taken down again. Edwards landed an elbow on top, cutting up Ward. You can see the blunt on his head um, from that cut. Uh, great fight for Edwards. Uh, he was set up to be a showcase. Oh, yeah, in this last round, Edwards got another takedown right in the mount, worked his way to back control, and that was pretty much the whole round. I had him up 30-27. One of the judges had a 29-28. Uh, oh, who the fuck was that guy? Dude, get the fuck out of here. Ward didn't win any of those rounds. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, there's no argument there. Like the Oh, the second round ended with sloppy striking. So if you want to... There, there, there's no if you want to. Like he just did not win any of those rounds. That was uh, not, not a good scorecard there. All right. Um... But yeah, good setup for him. Obviously, they're you know angling to put him in the title shot against Ablin, and you know they're setting up that the storyline of like, oh look, you know he's gonna, he's fighting for the title here, and his brother's a champion in the UFC. Isn't that cool? And then they can mention the UFC over and over again, get more media attention and that kind of stuff. And then the fact that they're brothers, it's just a good it's a good move for him uh, organizationally. It's just not my favorite when you know you match him up with a guy who uh, he was clearly supposed to beat. All right, uh, Saul Rogers taking on Tim Wild. Rogers winding up uh, really big and Wild landing uh, low, low kicks at distance, trying to keep him at bay. You might hear me say that a lot if you watch my videos this weekend. It seems like everybody's doing low kicks, trying to keep distance. Rogers ducked down and got a double, uh, attempted a Peruvian necktie, up to, and then attempted a second one um, after being uh, in control for three minutes. You know, it, it's. Wild did land an elbow from the bottom that caught him up in this first round, but Saul got the um, Rogers just not moving well on the feet, and he's looking a little labored. But the thing is, Wild didn't do anything in this last uh, in the last part of this round to do enough to kind of swing it back in his favor. So I gave that first round to Rogers, ten nine. Man, uh, Saul got a double leg takedown again. Um, but then Tim got right back up this time in the second round. He was looking really tired. Uh, you know, Wild was throwing, he threw a spinning kick and got caught, but rolls through the takedown, ended up on top. Tim did much more in the second round, but it's going to come down to, uh, it really came down to uh, Roger's cardio and whether or not it could hold up. You can see some of these nasty shots that uh, Wild landed here. Um, both the guys uh, got cut up pretty bad in this one. Uh, they were bleeding everywhere. So, in the, uh, I had it nineteen nineteen going into the third. So Rogers uh, much more labored and swinging wildly, not really, uh, not able to really drive through on his takedown attempts anymore. Tim unloading more now, throwing with ease and letting his hands go and letting his kicks go. Rogers caught a kick and finally able to get it to the ground, not able to get the submission, and Rogers just not enough. Twenty nine twenty eight. Um, first of all, uh, Saul Diamato gave the fight to Wild which is correct, but some other guy gave it two rounds to one in favor of Rodgers after getting absolutely mauled for most of it. Not okay, guys. Not okay. This uh, There's some f fucked up scorecards on here, uh, on this card, and uh, it's just <laughs> not, not good. And, uh, get, you know, Saul D'Amato has not been in the news Lately, I mean, I've been mentioning his name because he's been making good decisions, and that does not erase bad decision necessarily. But can, do you guys know that his name hasn't been in there for fucking up lately? So good on him. Uh, and it, it's, I don't want to harp on it too much. One, because it's late, and two, like I, I went off tangents and I was really harped on it last week, and I re I don't want to do that. I want to keep this video short and concise. We're gonna move on here. To the opening fight on the main card, Justin Gonzalez, 
Justin Gonzalez taking on uh, Andrew Fisher. This was another one. This is a Bellator special here. So not too much action through the first half of the round. Uh, Justin was landing uh, more strikes, usually one at a time. Um, beautiful standing transition to the back and dump by Justin. Uh, I don't know if Fisher landed anything significant in that first round. 10-9 to Justin. Uh, it looks like Fisher just doesn't really belong in there. It's one of those times where you really see the difference in Bellator roster between the guys in the top, the guys who are ranked, you know, the guys who are angling for a title shot versus uh, the rest of their fighters on their on their roster. Uh, Fisher's face is all beat up, um, just an absolute fucking wreck. Um, Gonzalez is out there just sparring. It's not the kind of fight I really like to see. Uh, when one guy is so mismatched like this, uh, it can happen in any organization, but it seems more common in Bellator. 30 27, uh, good fight for Gonzalez. So, what I'm saying by that when I say that the, this happens more in Bellator, um, it's because there is such a disparity in the skill level, be, because there's no feeder league for Bellator, right? Bellator is the end goal, but they also bring in a lot of, you know, new talent they bring a lot of like 500 fighters in some veterans who have bounced around to not necessarily the ufc just but you know they've been bouncing around uh, the professional circuit a little bit on the on some of the smaller organizations so you get matchups like these where they're really trying to angle they're really trying to push a fighter and then they'll give them a veteran but that veteran is not washed necessarily but that veteran is you know past his prime a good it's a good matchup for the fighter that they're trying to push. Sometimes it backfires, but most of the time it's really just stat padding. It's uh, very similar to what boxing does, and Bellator is really good about that, is promoting their fighter by you know stacking the stacking their record. You know they did it with Michael Venom Page for a while. E you know even their bigger fighters, it's, they try to groom their their talent. They try to have some really good homegrown talent. They try to pick up younger fighters, and then. They lead them into these bigger fights by padding their record a little bit, and some of them come out on top, some of them don't, and then they just get washed. But the, it, it's just not fun to watch. And this is one of the reasons I don't like watching boxing all the time is these mismatches, these stat padding, these career record padding fights. Just don't do it for me. Right? There's... You know, I, I like watching competitive fights. Now, there's fights... When, when I watch UFC matches, there's times where there's a complete blowout, but many times, it's because one guy is just so much better, even though they're both at the highest level. Like, you guys see fighting... You guys will see people fighting for the title, and one of, it's just a complete blowout, but that's just because the person who wins the title is just that much better. And to be honest with you, you know, those might nece not necessarily be my favorite fights to watch either, but it feels natural, earned, and deserved. Whereas when I'm watching stuff like this in Bellator, it just feels forced and fake. Like they're trying to show me how good this fighter is by letting him beat up somebody. And like I don't, I don't need to see that. I can watch sparring footage of him beating up a bag if I want to. And uh, part of it might just be because Bellator doesn't have the cultural cachet that the UFC does, so they can't attract some of the bigger talent, and they can't load their roster with the best in the world. But that creates part of the problem. Is some, you, some of the top five in these divisions are so good that they can compete in any organization, including the UFC. <coughs> oh, damn cats. Why do you have cats if you're allergic? Because I'm a sucker. Right, because I'm a sucker. I love animals, and I like having them around, even if they make me make me miserable. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's call it on that before I have a really bad allergic reaction here, because it seems like I'm about to. So, uh, if you guys are looking for the prelims for this, it'll be I'll I'll put that out later. If you're looking for the UFC, I'll be putting that out tomorrow or later today. Really, um, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Like I said. At the top, if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel. If you like MMA, you like podcasts about MMA, you like boxing sometimes, 
If you're looking for the uh, Jake Paul Anderson Silva one, I just posted that one. So go ahead and check that one out. If this is the only video that you watch this week, I really appreciate y'all for stopping by. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I really mean it. Uh, thank you for engaging. Let me know what you guys thought about the fights. What else do you guys want to talk about? Just anything, right? What did you guys think about the scorecards? Am I am I going too hard in the paint on some of these judges? Or uh, are they really that fucking bad? Because uh, I'm... That's my opinion. I think they're fucking horrible. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. Have an amazing week, and I love y'all.